All right, welcome. Uh, my name is Dr. Seth Jenny, and we are going to continue our discussion about the IRB, Institutional Review Board, and give you some example uh, IRB applications as well as show you some informed consent forms and examples for that. So let's um, take a look at Slippery Rock University's IRB webpage. So the IRB it is the responsibility of the Institutional Review Board members to assure the practice of ethical research involving human participants in compliance with the state and federal regulations for research conducted under the aegis of SRU. So there are faculty members, uh, typically would be the chair um, at a university, as well as staff members who handle um, the paperwork relating to IRB applications. So let's take a look at, at the how to apply to IRB. Um, scroll down here. Now the IRB as a committee, they meet to review the um, uh, applications that require uh, more extensive reviews. And there are several different levels of investigation. And I'm going down to here. We talked about city required city online training. And here we have levels of review. And so there are three levels based upon the type of research you are conducting. Um, and this is pretty typical at most universities. Exempt, expedited, and full board. Or all, most people call full review. So let's see the definite, how they define it here at Slippery Rock. Exempt is exempt from further review is defined as no risk to participants and includes research such as anonymous surveys. All right. It does not mean that the study is exempt from an IRB review, but what it does mean is they must make a determination that it does satisfy that level of exempt. Expedited is that second level is defined as research that poses no more than minimal risk and that's always going to be a subjective term but they try to make it as objective as possible minimal risk to participants does not utilize minors or other vulnerable populations so um, people with disabilities uh, prisoners um, might be vulnerable populations or um, as you can see other examples minors people under 17 and under and includes research such as surveys where participants can be um, identified and let's move into full review full board review is defined as more than minimal risk to participants this includes research involving minors or other vulnerable participants as subjects or questionnaire surveys on a sensitive topic um, such as someone's criminal history, someone's uh, sexual orientation are examples for that. So going back to the um, Slippery Rock University uh, IRB website, now at the bottom of here we can see here's the IRB application which I'll show you in a second and uh, the other forms relating to conducting research um, as well as consent forms. All right, so here is the SRU IRB application um, template here. You can see uh, the different components, start date, end date, proposed review category, the ones we just went through, what's the level of risk, Identify all the participants you might encounter, all the, all the risks, what's the title of it, who are the investigators, is this funded research, which may introduce bias potentially, do you have any relationship uh, to the sponsor of the study, will it involve an outside entity, Have you completed the mandatory training, ethics training? Describe the participant information, some of the basics of the research, me research methodology, and then continuing on the investigator assurances, all of the co-investigators 
research assistant sign off there. And then you're going to list the purpose. How will the results be disseminated? What's the location of the research? Who is your target sample? The participants. Why is this participant population appropriate? Describe step by step all the procedures you will use to recruit the participants. What's the minimum and maximum number of participants? Describe the amount of compensation or any type of incentives. Are you giving out an iPad um, to every participant? Are you randomly drawing an, an iPod to one participant? Are you paying the participants? Next, how are you obtaining consent from participants? If you are, describe how um, how will you use in order to address your purpose? What are those procedures that you're going to use to address the purpose of the study? List all the data collection instruments. How are you analyzing the data? What are the risks and discomforts? De identify and describe all precautions you have taken to eliminate risks. If using the internet, what confidentiality and security are you using? Passwords, that type of thing. What are the benefits to the participation? What are the benefits to the general population for conducting the study? How are you going to protect the data? Is it going to be anonymous? How are you going to keep that data confidential? Are you going to use a code list? Are you using pseudonyms? Justify your need for the, to code the participants. Will uh, Who will have access to the data? How and where will the data be stored? Is it under lock and key? When is the latest date the confidential data will be retained? How will it be destroyed? What qualifications do the investigators have? What training? And here is a checklist of all of the things that you would potentially need to include in that IRB application. And I'll show you an example of those. All right, now what I'm going to show you here is an entire IRB application uh, across several different documents. Uh, typically, then um, it, you hard copy, sign it, and then scan it all into one PDF file. This is from Winthrop University, and we'll go through uh, this application form and then inform consent, copies of recruitment materials to show you a flyer, recruitment flyer, copies of the surveys, copies of any interview questions, debriefing form, and then any other materials that the participants might be uh, interacting with. And so here is information about, so I uh, showed you the Slippery Rock University, here's the Winthrop University ones, the title, Virtual and Wall Rock Climbing, Motivations and Motor Movement Comparisons was the title of the study. There's the dates. Where will it be disseminated? Academic presentation, publication, who's involved in uh, on the research team, faculty and graduate students. And the here is describe the purpose of the research. Here is a bulleted style protocol or methodology that's going to be used. So this whole document is seven pages. Explain um, briefly but completely what tasks or activities the subjects in this research will be doing. And so they are going to be playing uh, Xbox Connect as well as climbing on an actual climbing wall. Describe uh, the subjects for the for this, the participants, who are they, how many. Now this is essentially focused at are there any vulnerable populations involved? How will they be recruited? How will you assure that the participation is voluntary? Uh, and then relating to, can the human subject be directly identified? How is that going to be covert? 
Will personally identifiable data will be shared with outside of the research team? Answer is no. The researcher will make sure that um, com maintain confidentiality. Describe how legally effective informed consent will be obtained. So that is described. And then uh, the waiver of informed consent, if that were to be. How will you store and dispose of the data? Indicate any documents that apply to your research. And training done by the researchers and then signatures. So let's take a look at uh, the informed consent. And here it is, it's three pages, lists the researchers, the title, purpose of the research, the procedures. Some of this is taken from the IRB application. The number of questions in the survey, how long will it take? Possible risks associated with this study. Was well, there any comp compensation or costs? Your right to withdraw from the study, that should always be listed in the consent form. Privacy of records, and then contact information for people if there's any problems, and then the participant signature. Next, I want to show you the recruitment flyer. This is submitted with the IRB application. They want to know how you are trying to recruit your participants. So this was put up on bulletin boards on campus. Next is the actual survey, uh, Qualtrics, a survey-based um, computer uh, web-based program was used to collect the information, demographic information. So you have to show, you have to have all of these things done in advance. Their video gaming experience, climbing experience, and then some other variables that we are collecting. Then you also need to have a debriefing form. That is when the study is over, what are, how are you going to debrief and um, talk about the results with your participants? And then after that application is submitted, the IRB office will provide you with the control number um, to track that specific study in the sponsored programs and research office. And then after it is reviewed by the IRB, you would receive a letter, something along the lines of um, that has been approved. Uh, if there's any modifications to the protocols, then you need to make those modifications. And um, it was uh, a passed as an exempt level study. Lastly, I want to uh, show you some ex consent forms. Um, I showed you one example, but here is where this was actually collected via Qualtrics online, where the consent form is put on before the survey is conducted, and uh, by a digital signature, the participate participants are signing um, consent before continuing on with the survey. And here is. A example from Slippery Rock University, their consent to participate, this is their template. So they go through each of the different sections and then provide suggested text within each of the different sections. Obviously, you would tailor what you write to each of those sections based upon what your study is uh, doing in what um, is being collected and what participants you would be involved if, in with your study. So in conclusion, um, people don't always systematically collect data. Uh, and social scientists will use systematic ways and ethically justifiable ways that are checked by others to conduct research.